Ahoy, my friends, Ryder here. Welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. Uh, I apologize for the hiatus. My wife and I have been setting up plans to go on an adventure to Central and South America for the last, like, few years now. And uh, finally, we got down here. We moved to Nicaragua, like, about a week ago. And we're absolutely loving it. It is very hot, but the beaches are beautiful. And I'm also excited because I was able to set up this camera. Um, I hope that it's good quality. I'm curious what you guys think. So let me know if you like it or if not. But that being said, uh, I'm doing this video today to overview Aerith's banner. Um, so let's go take a look at it, shall we? All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down here. I want to actually take a look at this thing because costumes are one of the coolest part about this game. And, you know, I love getting a new one. And today I'm wondering if I'm going to be pulling on this banner. I'll talk about the weapon, the costume, where I think it works, where I think it doesn't. And just overall reviewing this banner as a whole. All right, so I'm going to hide the UI here and take a look at this. This costume um, is one that I think everyone who's really into this game has seen before. Uh, there were previews of it in the beta, and it is really quite a beautiful costume for Aerith. She does make it look really good. Um, and even better, I really like this uh, floral wand. Like, this thing is pretty sick. It reminds me of kind of like a druid staff or something like that. So it does look cool. I love the flowers for anyone that is attention to detail. I'm pretty sure these are the flowers that grow um, either in the church where Aerith first meets Zack and Cloud, um, and then also where her mother lives and where Aerith lives. Um, I believe in Sector 8. So, really cool costume overall, and the weapon looks rad as well. Alright, so aesthetics aside, let's go into the details and let's check out this weapon. Alright, so we'll actually start with the costume. Let's start with the costume. Alright, so this is the floral gown. It gives boost HP and buff debuff extension. Um, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little surprised about the fact that they released another costume with Yuffie's, uh, with this uh, R ability on it. I thought that Yuffie would be the only one with this for a little while, but um, I mean, for Aerith to get it, I mean, there's no better character in the game than for Aerith to get this at the moment. Um, so right off the bat, with 10 points, you're going to be at a buff slash debuff effect duration of plus 40%, uh, which is pretty good. There's going to be multiple weapons right now already in the game that allow you to boost this up, even if you have it at just base OB level or OB1. So it is going to work pretty well for her. Um, and HP is always a great thing. I mean, I, I can't complain when there's HP on a costume, personally. So overall, I think that... So let's go check out some of her weapons really quick and see what would work with this. So I'm going to go down here to the wish list and then we can run over to Aerith. Um, so this weapon or this costumes our abilities are going to work with anything that has a buff or a debuff on it, right? So it is going to work with this weapon right here, which reduces physical defense and uses a wind in peril. It's also going to work with the snowflake right here, which uh, reduces magic defense. Um, one of the great things it's going to work with is going to be this sun umbrella here, which I think is going to be really cool. Although in a lot of compositions, when I'm using the sun umbrella, I tend to be casting this ability over and over. So it's not necessarily like I need it to be extended. I tend to pair it with um, fairy tale. So it's definitely going to have its moments where that buff extension is going to come in handy a lot. And this debuff extension especially for this one. So it is looking good. She does have a lot of viability in her kit for things that it can be uh, used on. It's like almost every single weapon, she has some type of buff or debuff. This is the first one we've come across that doesn't, other than the prism rod right here. Um, so for me, this is what stands out the most, is the mithril rod. So I love this weapon. The problem with this weapon is that it doesn't last very long so you really have to time your casts on it um, to get the max potential out of it and then the other problem is that it has a 5 ATB cost which is a lot so for example certain combinations just have never worked for me um, 
fairy tail in mithril rod don't work just because you would need 10 atb to do back-to-back -back casts on it and uh it's just too tricky especially with this time frame here however now that this costume has come out i feel that the um viability of this weapon overall would be much better because let's say if you had a 80 percent increase on this its duration is 14 seconds let's just say for simplicity's sake that 80 percent of 14 would be something around 10 right so that's going to be a 24 second duration on mithril rod which is going to completely change this weapon and make it that much more viable now i don't know about you guys but for me Aerith is still my main healer i don't really use matt very much although i'm going to start trying to incorporate him into parties more often however i feel like i'm most of the time running fairy tale on her so the mithril rod is not going to be that viable all the time however for example if you were running her like a wind arcanum build you could put the uh the prism rod in the first slot and then the mithril rod in the second slot um and i feel like this combination would go pretty well you could use her as like a buffer when she's needed but then also still have her doing damage um so that could be pretty cool uh other than that i feel like there's no real inherent need for this buff debuff costume at the moment i feel like more or less you can get by with what's out there so right off the bat i'm gonna say is this a must-have thing i don't think so uh, at least for my account i would say it's not a must-have but it's definitely going to make certain content a lot easier to clear all right so that being said um let's go down and let's look at her weapon right okay so this is the floral wand um, at level 90, base 5 star, we're going to get 260% physical non-elemental damage. So it is a physical weapon, um, which is pretty rare for Aerith, I think, uh, because she is a natural magic attribute character. Um, it is going to debuff physical defense, potency mid, max potency mid at base level, and then also do the game's first Wind and Pearl. I think all of us knew that this Wind and Pearl weapon was coming. Um, it makes sense that it goes to Aerith, although I honestly feel like it could have gone to several other characters as well. Um, however, for the Wind and Pearl, it is not going to take effect unless your HP is above 50%. Um, personally i'm not really a fan of this uh i get that they it might be overpowered if they didn't put this there but it can be kind of annoying sometimes like i didn't realize that it wasn't triggering for me when i was using sephiroth in a fight against uh ex2 bahamut with his kuja spirit blade but i guess once you run into that problem over and over you'll eventually start to see uh <laughs> the trend of it but all in all, it looks like the Wind in Peril is going to start with a potency of low, and it is going to go to mid right off the bat, so that's not bad. Now, here is a interesting thing. When you get this to OB6, it just skips mid. The Wind in Peril goes immediately to high on base cast, and then second cast just extends the duration of that high, which is pretty insane that it goes... I figured that this one, they didn't want to make this a whale only weapon, I think, which is why they did this. Um, but I feel like it could have been mid to high, but I'm not going to complain. It, it's nice that it bumps to high at OB6, but to be honest, I don't even think that it's really that. I think just having one copy of this weapon will be good, and you can just wishlist it if you want, or slowly wait to get them over time. Um, and now let's look at OB10. It's going to deal 420% uh, damage physical non-elemental damage the physical defense is never going to hit high potency it's still going to be mid mid same as what it is at base um and then the wind and peril is just going to be high where, where it's at now if we look at the r abilities here we have boost attack going all the way up to 54 which is pretty damn good so as a uh, sub weapon for wind characters uv sephiroth um tifa this is going to be a pretty damn good um, sub weapon. So for whales that are pulling on this, they're going to be able to make some pretty monster uh, wind builds out there. And the wind potency going to 36, also really good. Um, so this weapon is looking pretty solid right off the bat. Its physical attack is at 566 at max, magic attack 384, and it's healing at 231. Now if we go into its support materia, 
It has a physical ability damage boost of plus 20% the first slot. Now this in the second slot makes this that much better. So we have the wind ability damage plus 30%. So while she has this, she's going to be able to equip um, either an Aurora Blow or a regular Aurora for the magic. It'll just depend on the build that you're working on. But I really love these because it can really increase your damage if you don't have Arcanum or Mastery costumes. Um, and I doubt you would be running this with Aerith um, while running her Prism Rod slash Arcanum costume. I think that you would probably use this and then pair her with Sephiroth, Tifa, or Yuffie, but you never know. I mean, normally you don't, I don't want to be normally imperiling with a DPS character uh, just because it's taking away from the overall DPS, but the nice thing about this game is that you can build characters like in any way, shape, or form. You can build those teams and there's so much freedom within it, and I really like that. All right, now it gets even better. So in the last Materia slot, we have an all slot so for cure spells the cure spells are going to target all although the cure spell restoration amount is going to be dinged to minus 40 percent but if you do have a good five star cura or a decent four star cura this is going to be pretty solid you won't have to bring fairy tales so that does free up that other slot uh so overall i would say that this is one of the best weapons we've seen in the game now that being said does that justify the need to pull for it when we can wishlist it later? So like I said earlier, at base 5 star, you don't really need that many more copies. I mean, I personally I would take this as a slow build. Um, I don't even know if I would be wishlisting it at all um, once I had the base copy. So it is kind of hard to say whether it's or not it's worth it to pull right now but let's take let's uh like think about the future here for a second so we know that rebirth is dropping in the third to fourth week of this month and i'm guessing that a lot of awesome stuff is going to be dropping in ever crisis as a result of that they knew that everyone in the game was waiting for a wind and peril weapon and the costume is just that much more enticing. It goes to high, it would be six. It has the wind ability boost damage in the second material slot. It has the cure roll in the third material slot. I mean, it's just like screaming, pull me, right? Um, also, the floral gown is definitely going to have its moments. I know that for sure, without a doubt. There's going to be moments in the future where putting this on and using that mithril rod is going to really come in handy. However, do I think that you absolutely need it to beat any of the content? No, I don't. Um, so for me, I'm still on the fence. As you guys can see, I have around 60k crystal saved up, which is more or less enough for two banners. Um, and if we look at the end date for this, it's February 18th. And if we go over to Yuffie's wind banner right here, it's also February 18th, which leads me to believe that on February 18th, something big is going to be happening. So I don't know if it's possible to wait for the data mine up until that point and then pull just to see what it is. It can be a little bit sketchy waiting to the last minute like that. But I think for me, I'm still on the fence. Um, I think that with Rebirth, we'll probably get a lot of uh, free crystals, stuff like that coming out. So even if I pulled this, I think that I should still be able to get up to close to being able to pull two banners. However, if we get something like the Final Fantasy IX crossover, something like that, where they just have these like three banners drop um, in a row and they're just like, you know, kind of power creep game breaking weapons that you would absolutely need whereas in this case um, this costume this weapon to me is is it not a must have all of the wind hard the hard wind content we've had in the game has been clearable without a wind and peril weapon um, however for those of you that are struggling on floor 70 of the setra tower it's definitely going to help for sure it's going to be amazing to have um, so these are my thoughts. If you have only enough crystals for one banner pull, I do not recommend pulling this. Definitely recommend waiting, wait for rebirth, see what's going to come out. You can wishlist this weapon, you only need one copy later on and then you'll be good. And you can definitely make do without the costume. Um, we 
the costumes in this game are the only thing that are really truly limited other than the crossover events uh, so it is hard to hard to kind of pass sometimes on them but I do believe that they will implement something in the game later on where it will be possible to get old costumes that you skipped on um, so that might be something or they might just say you know costumes are there you either get it where you can and then you never get it again which would also be pretty crazy um, but I just don't think they're gonna do that oh and here's something else that I forgot to mention uh, the weapon itself is the first three ATB cost weapon uh, I think we've had, except for maybe Nameless uh, from Sephiroth. I think his is two ATB cost. Um, but that's actually pretty damn phenomenal. I mean, this thing is just shining everywhere you look at it. It's a great weapon. So I think that if you have you know enough crystals for one banner, it's a definite skip or hold off for now. See what's coming. Maybe pull later on. If you have enough for two banners or maybe even three, um, then yeah, maybe. Like right now I'm on the fence, I'd say I'm about 50-50. Um, like if I pulled this and I got really good luck on it, I'd be pretty stoked. But if I pulled it and I got bad luck on the pity, I think I'd be a little bit bummed. Because is it worth 36,000 crystals? Because that's what you're kind of prepping for, right? Is worst case scenario on these banners. So is it worth 36,000 crystals for... A couple copies of this wand and the floral gown and I think at this point in the game knowing that rebirth is around the corner I would say no so my recommendation is hold off for now unless you absolutely want it um, and you have the enough to go for two banners then yeah I can see the viability of going for it but for now I think I'm gonna hold off I might come back in a day or two after taking some time thinking about it and maybe make a pull video for it um, the costume does look amazing, but as of right now, I can't really justify going in on it just because of how big I think Rebirth is going to be. So yeah, that being said, I hope this video helps you guys out today. Um, I'm curious to see people out there in co-op using this, and uh, it's unfortunate that we probably won't see too many people with it right now, but it does look pretty freaking awesome. I want to thank everyone for being patient with me and my channel. I know that I didn't put up a video for like almost the last two weeks, but like I said, we are moving down to Central South America for the next year so that I can work on uh, new books that are coming out. I have five novels publishing this year and then also trying to just have my YouTube channel grow organically in the meantime. Um, it's just a little hobby of mine. YouTube is just a hobby. I've never really gone full into it and I don't, I don't really have the... Um, the time really to go crazy into it either like i'm a storyteller i'm a professional novelist that's what i love to do with my time and so youtube can be very time consuming but for those of you that stuck around for those of you that support me thank you guys so much i really appreciate all of you uh so yeah i hope this video was helpful for you guys if it was drop a like leave a comment um, that being said i hope you all have a wonderful day take care and peace